How you doing? This is going to be a video about understanding autopilot, what you should expect when using autopilot, and what the limitations are of autopilot. This applies to the Model 3, the Model S, and the Model X. Autopilot is not self-driving. I'm going to go over the autopilot features in the Model 3 and what you should expect when driving the Model 3, because there's a lot of you out there that are going to be getting your Model 3 soon have never experienced autopilot and you need to know what to expect when picking it up because the service centers or the delivery centers don't go over all the features and what you should and shouldn't do and when to use it and when not to use it so we're going to go over them first thing these side roads where the speed limits 45 miles an hour they're small narrow roads autopilot is not designed for this does it work yes to a point let me turn it on for you it does work but you see it's set to 45 miles an hour which is the speed limit on this road but you cannot go over that 45 miles an hour you can see it will stay in the lines but you need to pay attention the biggest thing you need to do is to keep your hand on the wheel this is not hands-free driving you don't have to use the pedal the steering wheel will know that you have your hand on there with the resistance of your hand that way it won't bug you to hold the wheel but does it work? Yes, it does work on these. The main purpose of autopilot is for the highway. But guess what? You still need to pay attention. You still need to, still need to keep your hands on the wheel. You still need to uh, focus and see what's out the road. You're not a back passenger when you have autopilot on. You are the driver still, and you are ultimately responsible for everything that happens to this vehicle. Now let's see what happens up here. This is construction. There's cars. See, the car actually does find out that there's cars parked on the, uh, on the road. It sees that it's stopping. It's doing really good. It stopped for the construction because there was a, there was a truck in front of me. It's going to stop for that. But did you notice what I was doing? I was paying attention. I knew that was coming up. I was ready to take over just in case. Now we're going to see if it actually goes through the construction, if it goes around the cones. I'm only going to take over if I have to. And I had to, it was gonna run right into those cones. There was a video on YouTube showing that it went through construction just fine. It's bumpy through here, but it would not do that. One of the major reasons why you need to pay attention while driving. This video is inspired because of all the hate in the media about Tesla, the latest fatal crash uh, in the Model X in California where it hit the barrier and there was a massive fire, they said. It wasn't really massive fire. There was multiple things that were at fault there. The major thing being that autopilot is a beta. You agree to it that it's a beta. It's not autopilot, it's, or it, it's called autopilot, but it is not autopilot in the fact that you can just let go and let it drive for you. The person who unfortunately passed away in that crash, that could have been avoided if he was paying attention and listened to the warnings from the what the Model X was actually giving him. The car data actually showed that he had warnings for five seconds before he actually hit the wall or hit that barrier. He had plenty of time to maneuver around that. That could have been prevented with the rumble strips. That could have also, his death might have been prevented from the water barrels or whatever they have there to, to take down the shock from the accident. So a lot of it is on the state as well because there was an accident prior to that. This is the type of driving I'm, it's wonderful at. The stop and go, heavy traffic area. It's tracking the car in front of us and the truck in front of this car. I can see all those vehicles and it's coming to a complete stop. My feet aren't on the wheel. It's gonna go by itself. So this is great for bumper, bumper to bumper traffic going slow, but you do have to stop it yourself if you don't wanna block the intersection. Like that would have been blocking the intersection completely. Um, you don't wanna be that jerk. So I stop the vehicle, I have to wait for the green light to go because the, the autopilot does not see green lights, does not see stop lights, it does not see stop signs, it does not see anything like that. It, it just knows the speed limit because of GPS. At this point, that will change. Now this is what autopilot was designed for. On the highway, nice lane markings, vehicles around, it can track everybody. You can see the car in front of me. You can see the, the semi, that's the sensors sensing how close the semi is. The cameras are keeping it centered in the lane. 
speed set to 74 max because the speed limit is 65 here I have it set to nine miles over the speed limit and it's just going to do that I mean it's just going to drive this my hand is on the wheel just in case now there's a there's a car behind me so I'm actually going to switch lanes I'm just going to turn signal on it's going to move over lanes for me and turn off the turn signal that is what this is for and like right here I got behind a, a semi because I was talking to the camera and look at that it followed the the semis doing 68 miles an hour it's actually going to stay at that 65 miles or it's going to follow whatever speed that's doing and then all I have to do is turn signal switch lanes and it'll speed up to the next car it'll speed up to this Cadillac it makes it easy driving I'm not touching the pedal down below I'm not doing anything all I have to do is focus on where the car is going, making sure that it's going where it's supposed to go. I mean, that's the whole idea behind autopilot right now, right, right now, that's what it is. In the future, it's going to be a lot better. In the future, you're going to be able to get your laptop out and do work. You're going to be able to take a nap if you want to. That will be scary, but eventually we'll be able to do that. Eventually, I'll be able to, when my daughter's in college, I'll be able to summons the car to her with no one in the car, let her drive it home, or let it drive her home for the weekend. I mean, that stuff is so amazing. That is so cool that Tesla's the only company really looking at that future. I mean, you have Waymo with their um, construction hat that sits on top of the car that looks ridiculous. You know, that thing is supposedly very accurate but it looks like it looks ridiculous and it cuts down on your range. And you have 15 cameras up there that can't even see through fog, that can't even see in snow and everything when the Tesla with cameras can see way more than what Waymo can. Tesla's technology is a lot cheaper. It's just cameras and a computer. Waymo, there's way, well, maybe that's how they got the name, Waymo. It's way more money to actually get Waymo to actually work. So all the people that don't have autopilot that have not driven autopilot, waiting for your Model 3s. When you get it, this is mainly what the car is designed to do uh, for autopilot. Yes, it can do the other roads. And it can do it pretty well, actually. There's been a lot of tests online where it does very, very well. But this is what it's mainly designed for. You're gonna take the fatigue out of your drive. My wife drives about 100 miles a day from up here in Mooresville down to Charlotte, North Carolina. Before, she used to call me on her way home after work on a long day and say, talk to me, I'm tired, or I can't. I hate this traffic, I'm stuck in bumper to bumper traffic. Now she doesn't call me with that stuff anymore because the car is doing most of the work for her. She's doing maybe 20% of the work on the highway. The car is doing the rest. And that is amazing. That is such a stress relief on your body. I just don't want these new Tesla Autopilot Model 3s to get out there and people start using it in crazy situations that it's not designed for. Uh, I understand testing and testing is fun to find out the limitations of it but you need to remember where it screws up on the highway some places it screws up and those places you need to take over and drive uh, and you have to know those those things and then you will learn, start to learn like hey I don't think it's gonna make this turn maybe I should really focus I mean, or maybe I should pay attention on this curve like the crash there's always gonna be crashes tragic situations that just shows everyone that you need to focus you need to pay attention because we don't want deaths the Tesla is a lot safer autopilot is a lot safer than a human driver let's keep it that way so there's less deaths we need to know how to use the technology how to make it work for us so there's less and less things for the media to get out there and exploit and really lie about sensationalize use autopilot that's what it's there for use it correctly test it and have fun, but be smart about it.